Hello everyone. There has been a lot of talk about latent consistency models over the last week or so. If you have not been following this trend, then this video is for you. But if you already know about latent consistency models, then probably this video is not going to offer you anything new. So let's get started. Head over to the Hugging Face blog and open up the article about SDXL in 4 steps with latent consistency LORAs. But first, what is this latent consistency? It's, in short, it's just about being able to generate images in fewer steps. And in this blog article, they say your steps can go from 25 to 50 down to 4 to 8. And this is really, really great. So why does it matter? Well, they also mention that in the article, they say over here it provides people foster iterations. Makes sense, right? It is because of the foster iterations, we get cheaper workloads and possibly the potential to use CPUs instead of GPUs. Again, um, emphasizing why this is, will potentially make things cheaper for us. So this is a great development and I really hope that it progresses and gets better and better over time. If you continue looking through this article, there's lots of great information here. Most of it I'll, I hope you'll read in your own time. Um, but let's take a few things I want to highlight. Over here, we can look at the guidance scale. And over here, if you put the guidance scale to 1, they're saying it effectively disables your negative prompts. So no need to use negative prompts when using the LCMs. If you set it to 2, then there will be some tokens of the negative prompt applied. All right, so just keep that in mind when you're generating images using LCMs. The other thing we can look at is, well, it's doing it in four to eight, eight steps, so that's faster, right? So how much faster? Uh, over here they have benchmarks, and if you look, it says on a Mac, we're going to get 10 times faster with four steps. That is fantastic. Over here on the 390 and the 490, we're getting it about five times faster with just the LoRa's and four steps compared to the standard SDXL 25 steps. Or if you're running on a Intel i9 CPU, you're getting it about seven times faster. That's really, really, really great. All right, so before we actually download the LoRa's and use them in Automatic 11.11. Let's look at some online demos. So over here, they have these demo links and if you go to them on the Hugging page, we could say a photo of a car and then click Generate. And that comes down really, really fast. But image quality is not that great. Um, and you can change the steps and the guidance scale to see if you get better better images. Right. I'll show how to get the better images in Automatic 11.11. Uh, so this is one of the online demos. The other one is this near real-time video stream. And you can try to get this to run on the online version, but you'll be queued behind other users sharing the same GPU. And so I wasn't able to get myself <laughs> into the queue. So I just happened to run this, this locally. So here I have it running locally. And if I start this with my virtual cam, this is the latent consistency model running near time image generation. And you can adjust different settings here, um, with the prompt being a portrait of the Terminator. That really, really comes out nicely. To so play around with the online version and see if that gives you good images. And 
this is a video stream with real-time latency consistency model with our visitor Coraline Smith <laughs> Alright, so now let's download the LoRa's and try to use this in Automatic 11.11 So, go to this section over here and download these LoRa's so what you want to do is click on the files and versions download this safe tenses file and when you do the download name it to whatever you want but you could potentially name it as LCM LoRa STXL install that in your automatic 11.11 folder under web UI models LoRa So do this same with the SD 1.5. Click on files and versions and download this safe tenses file and name it to something that you will be able to recognize. Alright, so now that you've got the files downloaded into your Web UI models LoRa folder, let's actually prepare automatic 11.11. So we we'll I want to make sure we're running the latest version of Automatic 11.11, so just do a git pull, check if it will pull down some new updates, and then run your web application. I'll just give it a moment for that to start up. If you have any updates, go ahead and apply and restart. Yeah. So we have updated the software, we've updated the extensions, and now we want to use these LoRa's. So we could, for example, try to do something like a photo of a horse. If we just generate this without the LoRa for a second, you'll see, okay, we have the, a photo of the horse. They said in the blog article that we should be using the steps 4 to 8. So let's go ahead and do that, bring this down to 8, click generate. Right, the picture is not that great, right? Let's change the CFG scale to 1.5 and generate and the horse is least recognizable. Alright, now let's go and add the LoRa in. So we've added the LoRa and we click generate. Now you can see the image is not that great. And if I try to change the sampling steps further and further down, the image is still not great. Well, <laughs> turns out that you've got to be picking the right sampler. So go ahead and choose the Eula A sampler and then click generate. And there we go. The horse looks much better. All right. Now I noticed you can go higher on the steps. Go to 10 and you still get a fairly good image for for the horse but as you go higher on let's bring this down to eight but as you go higher on your cfg scale look what happened right, the image starts to get worse until you really don't get the image of a horse of what you want to so keep this between one or 1.5 for your image generations with LoRa. But as you notice, the the speed it takes to render is really, really quick. So it gives you an opportunity to cycle through images much faster. Okay. Now, that's how you can use the LoRa with Automatic 11.11 and EULA A, but what you really want is this LCM sampler. 
Now I don't know if you will get this LCM in your list. One of my extensions, I think, is added that LCM because I didn't add it as you saw in the beginning of this video, but it appeared in the list. And this is the one you really want to use. But ULA will still work for your purposes if you don't have this LCM. All right, so let's compare a few of the sampling methods using the XYZ plot. So select the script XYZ plot, Se select the sampler. Let's just pick a few. You can choose to play around with ones that work for you. All right, so let's say we want these, this one, and this one. And then in the Y, we want the CFG scale. We'll choose 1, 1.5, and 2. Leave all the other settings. Leave all this, and then click Generate. Okay, let's take a look at the result. As you can see, the other samplers don't do so great with this latency consistency models, but the EULA A and the LCM are pretty close on on the image quality. So if you don't have LCM in your list, choose EULA A. I'll provide a link in the description below about an issue that's been logged. Stable Diffusion Web UI website. This is the issue. You can see that the issue is open. Um, where LCM is not part of the drop down list here. So you can go ahead and read about this and watch this issue if you don't have the LCM. Okay, so that's all for today and I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to learn more about Stable Diffusion and Automatic 1111, check out the links below in the description. As always, please support this channel by subscribing and clicking the like button below.